as much as I can right now. And then on, uh, I may have a part two. So we'll see uh, how this goes, um, if I can get through everything um, that I wanted to uh, cover for you guys today. <clears throat> so yeah, I've been better, but I'm okay. How y'all doing? Y'all doing okay? I'm going to give it a few more seconds and then I'm going to get started. Um, the last thing I'll cover is the neck band because I think a lot of people want to see um, the neck band. <clears throat> and then I'm going to talk a little bit about um, working with uh, knits and... Uh, some foolproof methods that you can use when you work with knits. Um, doesn't matter what type of knit, but in this case, uh, the dress that I'm working on is ITY. So, um, I can share out, I guess. Um, let me just, I'm just going to hit a bunch of people, I guess. Send to this one, send to that one, send to this one. So just share out if you guys can. And I imagine that a lot of people are at work like me. <laughs> um, okay. I think I just got 15 people. All right. So now let me go ahead and um, get started. First thing I wanted to talk to you guys about, um, and this is a project I'm working on now. I'm making myself a t-shirt dress. This is an easy uh, <clears throat> new look t-shirt dress. The number is 6597. And um, I ended up using a gifted fabric that a friend sent to me for my birthday. Now, this fabric is abstract, so it has all kinds of shapes. So I'm not sure if you ever noticed this before, but when you have a fabric with a pattern on it, any kind of print, any kind of pattern, they are in a repeat sequence okay so you may see a bunch of flowers and then maybe about two flowers down you'll see that flower again so this is the repeat series so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna point it out to you on this piece of fabric that I have which is called my dress so let's get a, a picture here so this is actually in a good spot so you can actually see the repeat. Okay, so this dress actually had a whole bunch of triangle thingies on it. And the triangles, and here's one main one right here. So the triangles were actually off center. And then this is a printed uh, center right here. So this is not, this is actually part of the fabric from the actual triangle patterns meeting in one edge. So you can see it's kind of abstract. So when you have this kind of pattern, uh, instead of getting all confused, the best thing to do whenever you're ready to lay out a difficult pattern like this or a difficult print is to find the repeat. So we can see here there's two uh, diamonds that are meeting. Then we got this up chevron and then several stripes then we have a large one then it goes down there's the diamonds again so right now there's two repeats of this actual print so if we look for the up chevron it's down here on the bottom so there's two repeats of each pattern on this particular fabric this is something that you want to keep in mind if you ever get into matching plaids. So what happens is, in plaids, same thing. You can go through a plaid sequence or a series of lines and stripes and colors, find the match, and then now you know where to go on your other piece of fabric to match those particular pieces of pants. Oh. Wasting your way. Yeah, when you match, you definitely waste fabric. I'm just going to tell you that right now. So that's why they tell you if you're going to match plants and stripes, you need to buy extra. 
because you need to find out where the sequence is that you can actually match again. So when you have this kind of fabric and you are uh, laying out something that needs to be stripe matched or needs to be plaid matched, you need to save all the scraps that you can. So in this case, after I cut out the back, I was like, oh my goodness, okay, so what about the sleeves? So I had this piece of scrap left for the sleeve. And here's the actual sleeve cut out. I had this piece of scrap left for the sleeve. So what I had to do was I thought about how everything was cut out. And when I had it on the fold, I had the lines matched up as well as I could. So I knew that there was another piece that was similar to this that was about the same size that I could cut my sleeve out of. So I hunted, I hunted, and I searched, and I found the actual match. And what I did was I counted the sequence of the lines. I went, okay, brown and white, white, gold, thick brown, blah, 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 big star or big diamond. And I found it, and I was able to lay two scrap pieces together, and when I laid the scrap pieces together, I matched them just a little bit. Not a whole lot, but I just made sure that they matched. And then I was able to lay them out. And now, when I have my sleeves, they'll be very similar. Okay? So, it's really important whenever you get a flowered pattern or a printed pattern that you pay attention to the repeats of the pattern and do that before you cut anything out okay yes i am getting you yolo we do not yolo on fabrics like this because if you yolo on a fabric like this it's gonna be all over the place and it's gonna look yoloed okay now y'all know i don't like itching don't make me itch okay now let's talk about the back for the back of this dress <coughs> um I could not lay the center back on this little detail right here because the center back is in two pieces so the back was cut on a curve to match the body right and then the skirt was way too big to fit on a half so what I had to do was be like okay well let me figure out what this does we got nothing but a bunch of lines here, right? So I'm like, okay, there's a chevron. So if I match these lines somewhere, somehow, I can come out with a chevron print. So when I laid out the back, <clears throat> I made sure that my back piece was laying on the, one, almost the center of the design. And you can see that here, right? So I said, okay. So when I folded the piece together, I made sure that my fold matched and that I had the same design underneath. So now, once I pin them together, this is not sewn, it's just pinned. So when I pin them together, now I have my design again. My chevrons are matched. This is just pinned, it's not, it's not sewn, so it's just pinned. So I have chevrons, so I have a similar look here on the front and I was able to create almost a similar look for the back piece now what I did to match my lines on my chevrons and this is what you can do to match your plaids and your stripes take your fabric and if you have, you know how we, we get a little upset when we got one piece of fabric longer than the other? That's okay in this instance because you can cut it off and you can still sew uh, with everything being, you know, okay. Because sometimes when stripes and plaids don't match and you have some extra fabric on one, that's a good thing. You can just cut off the extra, the excess. All right, so now what I did... <clears throat> was when I laid these, I made sure that I had the right, the same fabric underneath. I just kind of took a little peek and make sure everything was lined up. Now when it's time to pin, I want to pin on my line. When you're pinning to match plaids or to match stripes, 
Always make sure your pin is at least 5 eighths in. You want to make sure that you're at least pinning where the seam line is. Because if you drop your pins up here in the beginning, what's going to happen is when you sew, your fabric's going to shift and your lines are going to be off. So make sure that you're pinning straight down. Now, I know I'm a little extra. Y'all think I'm a little extra, but here's what I'm, here's what I'm going to do. Now you can see I have my pins right in there at the in the in the lines where the lines meet and that's how I made sure that everything was matched, right? But what I'm going to do before I sew this is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hand base this all the way down. Not machine base because machine may move it. I'm going to hand base this all the way down. I can take my pins out, then I know it's not I'm, it's not going to move. Now I'm ready to serge the edge. And then I can go back in with my sewing machine because I got my serge in now and my hand based. I know my lines are not going to move. Then I can go ahead and zigzag stitch or lightning stitch uh, my seam line um, before I get done. I had you until the hand basting. All right, Karen. So you're going to be one that I need you to do the hand basting because we can't have your garment looking bad and somebody else is looking good. I want everybody to look good. So when this is then sewn and fine with the final sewing machine stitch, everything will be lined up <clears throat> and it'll be fine. It'll be it'll stay like this permanently. Okay. So my main thing is when you're pinning, make sure you pin in the seam allowance so we know when the when the stitch goes through we're at the point where we need to be in order for these to match up perfectly and that's how you get a perfect match perfect plaid matches and stripe matches and uh, that kind of thing happens from knowing where your pattern repeat is on your garment because when you find your pattern repeat then you can find the perfect matched plaid. Uh, and plaids are in sequence just like everything other, um, just like everything else. They're in like a color sequence. And as they travel, you'll see, okay, one color sequence, then there's a second one. And the same with plaids, they also go vertically. So it's up to you to decide if you want to go with a vertical plaid or a horizontal plaid, how you want to match it. Thank you for the lesson. I joke, but definitely apply the knowledge. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, no, I'm... T <laughs> you know what? You know what? You're supposed to be my daughter. You're going to get a spanking later. All right, now. So, I wanted to talk about this Saradara sequence thing. So, anybody got any questions about the sequence? But you see exactly what I'm talking about right here and right here. That's the re repeat number two. Right here, right here. There's usually two to three repeats on each uh, pattern. Sometimes flowers have three different flower repeats. And then they go down and further down and further down. So if you're going to match a project and you want to start matching projects, make sure you buy extra fabric. you got to buy extra fabric. All right. Now, for the color thing that, that Miss Cos is waiting on. I know you're waiting, Miss Cos. Here we go. All right. Now, <clears throat> this particular pattern, this hair dress here, asks for a folded down collar. The seam allowance on this collar is five eighths of an inch. So the pattern says, fold it down five eighths of an inch and then stitch it all the way around. So what that is, is a recipe for a stretched collar. Okay, for your collar to be looking like that downy commercial where that guy's going to dinner with the girl and he just looks a hot mess. Okay, now, here's what you need to do. There is a rule floating out there in, in uh, YouTube land uh, about collars. And the good rule is the 80% rule. Okay, now, so, or 80, 85% rule. So let me explain that. 
what they're saying is when you take the circumference of your neck, and I know circumference is a big word, that's just that means the that area around your neck is the circumference. You want to make sure that your neck band is good enough that when you sew it, that it's the right length, and when you sew it on. It doesn't ripple, it doesn't hang open, it doesn't look ugly, blah, 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 blah. Skippy, skippy. All right, here's what you need to do. Everybody ready? Now, this is what you're going to do <clears throat> when you first get ready to lay out your dress. Now, we talk about pattern here, okay? Not pattern on fabric, we talk about pattern. Now, this is what you do. You will take your pattern. Now, if you want to write this down, go ahead and write this down. Um, I am going to repost this video on my YouTube space. But if you want to write this down, you can write this down. Okay. On said pattern, I'm going to need you to mark off the seam allowance on the back neck. Okay. You can use a ruler. You can use a curved ruler, whatever you need to use. Uh, but you need to be five-eighths of an inch from the edge of the pattern. Okay? So you can see here in pink where I have marked off my seam allowance. Okay? Because this is two, I put a seam allowance on the center back. I put, will there be a quiz later? No. Your quiz is going to be that garment that you make. On social media and I'm looking at it like this going mm, she wasn't listening and I'm gonna call you out that's the answer to your quiz I don't do F's I just call you out all right so anyway you will be marking the red line on your seam allowance okay so I want you to do is mark the seam allowance on your pattern then you're gonna take this here front piece and you're gonna do the same you going to mark the seam allowance on the front neckline. Everybody got that? All right. Okay. Now, once you get the seam allowance on your pattern, that's pretty much the whole battle. Then you decide, well, what color neckband do I want? Okay, well, let me go look at my stash and figure out what color I have. Okay, well, this here I found some brown, so I'm going to use brown. All right. Now, what you want to do for the 80% rule is you want to add up the circumference of the neck and the circumference of the back. What the hell you say? I'm going to make this real easy. You're going to take a curve ruler... Or a measuring tape. Whatever you have. And this is what you're going to do with those wonderful lines you just drew. My camera right so I can make sure y'all can see what's going on. Okay, there we go. Sorry about that. Alright, so I'm going to use a curve ruler for those of you who have curved rulers. These are crotch seam rulers. Um, and they start at zero and go all the way up to... 18 so it's 18 inches long it's just flexible that's all okay flexi ruler you can get um at joanne or you can get it online at amazon i'm sure all right so now the only thing i'm going to do is i'm going to measure from seam line to seam line from the shoulder seam to the seam where i would be sewing my back pieces together i'm just going to measure right there in that little area and this is and I'm just curving it to match the lines that I drew. And so I'm just going to give y'all up close view so y'all can see. That's all I'm doing is measuring this area. And this area to the seam line is 5 inches. Okay, so write that down. 5 inches. That's what this little curved area is on the back. Of my dress. Actually, I got five and a quarter. So let me do that again in case it moved. Yep, it's actually five and a quarter inches. Okay, so if you do not have a curve ruler, then you take a regular measuring tape. 
and you do what us pros call walk in the tape. This is what we do when we call walk in the tape. We start at zero and we walk the tape around the lines that we draw. And when it gets to the mark where we need it to get, then we just say, okay, it's five and a quarter. That's all you do. That's called walking the tape. Just walk the tape and you can walk it an inch at a time, a quarter at a time. It's all up to you and your fingers. Okay. And I'm at five and a quarter. I did it again. Okay. Five and a quarter, you say, what is that? Well, what is a quarter? A quarter is 25 cents. If you have any issues with fractions, think about it as money. Okay. Five and a quarter is 525. 25 cents is a quarter, y'all. They call it a quarter, remember? All right. So, 525 is the distance that I have from seam to seam on my neckline. But guess what? I don't have half a neck on my back. I have two sides. So, I got to add that twice. So, that's 525 times 2. The total distance on my neckline. Once I get everything cut out and sewn up. Including my seam allowance is $10.50. $10.50 equals the back. So I'm writing that down. The back is $10.50. That's the distance between my neck from seam to seam times two. Because I got a left side and I got a right side. A left side and a right side. $5.25 twice 1050 all right so i'm done with the back and then i do the same thing with the front i take my tape and i walk the distance that i marked from seam allowance to seam allowance now this piece is on the fold so guess what there's not going to be a seam allowance here on the front only here at the shoulder seam so i'm gonna walk this here and I'm walking it up. And when I walk it up, it is nine inches. Is that what I'm getting? Yeah, I get nine inches. Actually, I wrote down eight. So let me re-walk. I'm walking my tape around my little pink line I drew. It's actually, it's eight and a half inches. That's what I'm coming up with. Eight and a half when I do my walk-in. All right. So eight and a half or 850, however you want to look at it. Two times because I got a left front and a right front, right? So eight and a half plus eight and a half is zero. Okay, to one, 17. Okay, so... I got 17 inches for the front. I got 10 inches, 10.5 inches on the back. Now I add those two together, which gives me 27.50 per this pattern. Okay, so 27.50 is the front and the back stitched at the shoulders, my neck hole all the way around. Okay, so that is the circumference of the neck of the dress. Now, let me clear this up real quick. Miss Carol, why wouldn't I just measure right here on the edge of the pattern? Because this right here is seam allowance. We want to measure where the actual neck is going to be sewn or what the actual uh, seam allowance is because this number right here that we just came up with, which uh, on this pattern came out to $27.50. This would be a much bigger number. Okay? So that's why we add the seam allowance. Because we don't want to start here. We want to start where our neckband is actually going to be attached to... The garment okay this is the seam line which is this line here okay so 2750 is the number that we have now with the 80 20 rule what you want to do 
let's scratch that 80 20 rule so with the 2750 what you would do is depending on the stretch of the garment you would do 85 percent stretch 80 percent stretch now for ity knits it's a pretty stretchy garment it's pretty stretchy but i have what's called the the cotton spandex this stuff is really stretchy and really spongy so i'm going to use a 85 percent number so what i'm going to do is all i do is take 2750 and multiply it by 85 percent use that percent sign on your calculator on your phone okay now if it's a shirt that's a jersey jersey doesn't it, it has a lot of it has some stretch and not a lot of recovery so you might want to go not quite as big of a number so maybe you want to do 80 percent. so you want to go less if there's a less recovery in your fabric you can do a lower number what has been tested as good is 80 percent being the minimum 90 for 95 percent being the maximum but 95 percent puts a whole lot of wrinkles on your outfit you don't want that stay safe use 85 percent so you're going to take the circumference of the neck, okay, and you're going to multiply it by 85 and the percent sign on your phone. And don't be sitting around figuring out that what's the decimal, um, 6, 10, it going to 85. Junior, ju Junior, uh, 75, to, don't do that because Junior ain't want to go, he ain't going to help you. Because he busy and you ain't going to do nothing but get confused. Multiply next circumference times 85%. Okay? And then when you get that number, somebody do that math for me. 25 by 85% and tell me what that number is. Give me that number. Somebody give me that number. Give me that number. Or is everybody on their phone? <laughs> I'm on my phone. Hey, Mika. Somebody, give me that number. Who's going to give me that number? You give me that number, I got something good for you coming in the mail. Somebody, give me that number. 85, 27.5 times 85%. There we go, chaos. 23.75. Okay, what is 75? 75 cents is three quarters, right? So that's what you put. 23 and three quarters. That's what you can put on your um, seam gauge. Use it on your tape. Maybe you got one of them wall whack jammies with all the numbers in it. That's how long my neckband needs to be. That's the length of my neckband. So I'm going to cut that out right now. 23.75 is the length of my neckband. So I'm just going to lay my, so you all can get a visual here. I'm just going to lay this down here. I'm going to start here. And 23.75 is like right here. So I'm going to cut it with a rotary cutter as soon as I can find my rotary cutter. Ah, there it is. And you got this big map by Anna. You can just hook it up. 2375 by right here. Now, 2375. Guess what? I almost forgot. 2375 is the total distance that I'm going to need. But guess what? I forgot. I forgot my. Uh oh. No, I'm right. It's 23 and. And a uh, what is that? Three eighths or five eighths? Twenty seven and a half times eighty five percent. And now, when you get these numbers, if you get too many numbers, you can definitely round up. Okay, so it's three seventy five. Three seventy five is is that one eighth or is that five eighths? 23, 375. Okay, so 
What I'm going to do is I'm just going to do 23 and 375, I think, is 1 8. Okay, now, here I go. Now, oh, I'm not going to cut it. So we have the circumference, right? Guess what I forgot? I forgot to add the seam allowance. So the seam allowance, and this is something I want you to write down so this will help you guys. For seam allowance, always add an inch and a quarter. And the reason why I say that is because 5 eighths and 5 eighths is 1 and 1 fourth, right? So the reason why I tell you always add an inch and a quarter because now we're getting seam allowances on both pieces that are being sewn together, okay? So whenever you do anything, add an inch and a quarter and you'll have seam allowances on both sides, okay? So inch and a quarter extra. You ain't got to be adding and thinking and thinking and adding. So I'm just taking that extra from 23 and an eighth, right? 23 and an eighth. And I'm just going to add an inch and a quarter. And I'm just using my ruler. I ain't doing no adding. I'm just looking right on here and I'm like, okay, here's another inch. <laughs> here's another quarter. That's all I'm doing, okay? I'm using this. I'm, I'm using this like it should be used, okay? So now... This needs to be cut at 23, no, inch and a quarter, 23 and an eighth, 24 and an eighth, plus another quarter, 24 and a half. I'm just going to estimate. I think that'll be good. Okay, so now I got my 5 8 seam allowances. It's the length I need it to be and the width that I personally like my neck bands to be is two inches and I like two and a quarter. I don't like just two inches because I don't know when I'm sewing a neckband, it seems sometimes like the the sewing machine just eats up so much of it. Um, I I use a um, three eighths seam allowance when I sew my neckbands on, but sometimes I just like them to be a little beefy and a little thicker. So that's just me. Um, but I'm going to do, I'm going to do a little bit more than two inches. I'll do two and a quarter. So I have my neckline folded in half. I'm just going to do, um, one inch and an eighth and I'm going to cut the rest off. Um, inch and an eighth because one eighth and one eighth equals one quarter. I don't know if I can draw this or not. This fabric is really, really flimsy. I'm going to turn it the other way. This is why we have the big mat. <laughs> so we can use the grid and not have to be worried about no other junk. All right, now I got my ruler and I'm putting my ruler over here on the fold. Uh inch and an eighth all right dropping it on an inch and an eighth so that means that the rest of it oh no that's not an inch and an eighth it is an inch and an eighth so now the rest of it i can cut off so then that makes my neck band a little wider than a regular average pattern piece. That's what I like mine, wider than the average pattern piece. Because to me, them pattern pieces be a little bit too skinny. And by the time you've been jerked around with it and messed around with it, it's just your waistband looks uh, crazy thin. So I like to add a little bit. As long as the sky ain't falling, adding a little bit extra to the neckband won't make a difference. Uh oh, there we go. It's a little bit bigger there. All right. Now I got my waist, my waistband. <laughs> I got my neckband, the width that I like it. Now I'm ready to fold it in half. And for those of you I seen out there in them their internets, when you put a neckband on. Here's what you need to do. You do not fold it together 
and stitch this part together. You'll have bulk city. Don't do that. Keep your neckband open. Take your right sides together. And then go ahead and stitch your ring, okay? So we gonna, let me make sure that this ain't all twisted because it's sure enough looking like it. There we go. So we're going to take, oh, that's already on. Fold your right sides together and go ahead and do your 5 8 Now, I added a 5 8 seam allowance because I added an um, inch and a quarter. I can sew it 5 8 of an inch, and then I can press these two open, okay? Then I'll have my ring. Once you have your band, you just put a pin in there. Then once you have your band, then go ahead and fold it in half. And knits love heat. Go ahead and press it. Now, if you're feeling like, okay, well, this is a little flimsy. I got this cheap modal knit or this jersey don't seem like it don't want to act right. Get you some knit stay tape or a knit piece of interfacing. And interface the band before you sew it. You can do that. The stretchy knit interfacing is not going to do anything but add stability. It's still going to allow for stretch. Now for you YOLOs out there. All you YOLOs out there. When you buy stretch interfacing, if you pull it in one direction, it's not going to stretch. If you pull it in the other direction, it does stretch. You need to lay your, head, uh, your interfacing with the stretch along with the stretch of your band. Don't just be taking that band and boop, tossing it on the interfacing and hoping that it works. <laughs> Don't do that. Let's find the part, that, the grain that stretches, lay the um, interfacing stretch grain on the same grain as your stretch of your neck band. So when you fold it and press it and stretch it, it's not going to make a difference. The only thing you're going to notice is that your neck band is nice and stabilized. Okay. Now, I do not have enough time to actually stitch this on for you, which I will do in a part two later on today. But let me just tell you this. For stabilizing your shoulder seams before you are ready to sew on your neckline or before you attach the neckline to your t-shirt or your shirt dress, whatever it is you're making. What you need to do to stabilize these shoulders, this is the best stuff ever and this is what I was going to show you all a while ago but I couldn't find it. Well, I found it. This is mesh stay tape. Everybody see that? It's mesh. It's not fusible. You don't iron it on, it's stitched on. So you can either put it on the seam line when you serge, or you can just put it on your fabric when you get ready to sew. This stuff is wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. It's called mesh stay tape. It's not fusible. This is fusible stay tape. This is good stuff. This is better. This is the Mercedes. This is the Bugatti. Get you some Bugatti. <laughs> they sell this at Joanne. Mesh Stay Tape. Okay. And this is what I put in the, on the shoulder seams of any and all of my stretch garments. It sews well. Your garment does not stretch out of shape. It looks wonderful. And when you serge it, you can hardly see it. You put it right on the seam line. If you're not sure where the seam line is, draw the seam line on your clothing and just pin it right there. Run it through the serger and this will get caught right up in your serge seams. Okay? And you can't move it. This is also good to use if you have a fabric that's heavy and bouncy. Put this in your side seams stabilize your side seams and you don't have to worry about your garment growing over time. This is going to stop that. It's going to stop those seams from sagging and it's going to stop the gravity from pulling on them. Okay. Mesh stay tape. This is what the pros use. So I'm telling you guys, 
buy it you won't be sorry at all okay definitely in the shoulder on the side seams of garments where the fabric is stretchy but it's heavy and bouncy this will stop that from happening but it doesn't ruin the properties of the fabric you still have that nice drape and that nice stretch and everything that you need um, on that garment so what i'll do on my part two which will be this afternoon is i will demo using this because i haven't gotten that far yet i'm at that stage now i will demo using this i will attach the neckband that we figured out together and i will attach it to said dress so when i'm done we'll have the finished shoulders we'll have the whole neckline already installed and then i can finish the dress later you only see fusible uh check wall whack. uh check some of the professional stores where you buy other stuff from it may not be at joanne anymore but i usually get mine at joanne and when I, I usually get it, when I see that they have it, then I'll go ahead and buy it. And I, for you um, purchase hoarders, you don't have to go out and get 12, 12, no, I'm just going to buy it all. You don't need to buy it all because <laughs> you're not going to use it all. <laughs> Let's be realistic, say stuff for somebody else, okay? Um, a roll of this stuff just for shoulders, I don't know, you can get like, several dresses out of here not two not three i'm coming for y'all don't be up in there trying to buy everything and then somebody be walking around with their dress looking like this to my well miss carol said to put stabilizing it yeah but there wasn't no more well we don't need to have that but it's, it's enough for everybody just get yourself one roll because you might buy it all and this may be something that you don't like okay so don't do that i just want you to try it get it try it then if you like it then you're on your own and uh you know feel free to knock over whoever you see with a cart full of this shit snatch one run whatever you need to do but on that first roll let's let everybody get some okay mesh stay tape this is the good stuff okay um here's the pattern that i'm using for my uh dress and I'm adding a neckband because there is no neckband on this pattern and it need it needs one. So going forward, when you guys see these patterns uh, without a neckband, if you just want to take five eighths and fold it down, go right ahead. But you're heading for disaster because that's how neckbands get stretched out of shape when you handle them too much. Um, and then you got a heavy double stitch thinking that the double stitch machine works. The, you got that heavy cover stitch that really drags it open. Put a neckband on your dresses. Learn how to install neckbands properly on your garments so that they look uh, professional made and, you know, they're comfortable. And when they wash and you put a little heat on them, they just pop right back into place. All right. Does, do I have any questions? I got time to field a couple of questions. Um, if not, then we shall reconvene this evening at, how about about, let's do 6.30 Central Standard Time. That gives the West Coast folks a chance to get home. And that gives the East Coast people time to eat dinner, but it ain't time to go to bed. No, they don't. They haven't stopped selling new, new look patterns in your store. They may be in a different place. This one is still available. This is actually one of the newer ones, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, sixty five ninety seven. This is like a a fall or spring or fall pattern. This one just came out. All right. So, I guess that's it. Ain't nobody got no questions. Ain't nobody got no questions. No questions. And don't be DMing me with no questions because I'm not going to answer you. <laughs> ah, that's it. All right, you guys. I'm going to save this video uh, for you all to watch later. Uh, I'll put them both up. Uh, Mika, what you got to say? I'm going to put them both up together. 
Um, so we'll have the part one and the part two. Show the pattern again. Go ahead and um, take a screenshot. But you don't have to necessarily use this pattern. I just like this pattern because it fits my body well. You can use any t-shirt dress pattern. Any t-shirt dress pattern, any t-shirt, anything with a pajama top, doesn't matter. Anything with a ribbed collar. Uh, I can't find it was an iron on still looking. No, oh, that's okay. Any t-shirt dress pattern will work. Just try and find one without a neckline. <laughs> All right. That's it. I will see y'all this evening. Where are you posting the rewatch? I'm going to post the rewatch in uh, YouTube. I'll put it on my YouTube channel. All right. And I'll have all of that information once I'm ready to post everything. I'll put out like a little video on my feed that gives you all the information and links that you need to get to this here video. All right. All right, you guys. See y'all later this evening. All right. We're going to get that collar sewn in tonight. All right. Bye, y'all.